Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. You heard Jorge Reyes uh, before, but he is an author. Of course, I love authors, and he wrote Justified Retribution. But he's got a big story to tell us today. Of course, he just came out with his book, and he's already getting a lot of press. But it's such a good book, it doesn't amaze me, but it is hard to get people to come out to uh, an event. There's so many events there. So welcome to the show, Jorge. Good morning, Anita. Thank you very much for having me here today. Well, I'm so proud of you. And, you know, everything you've done is really paying off, as they say, as far as getting it out there. Uh, so tell me where, where this was. Uh, first of all, let me tell everybody, if you had gotten the uh, the February issue, you would have seen his book. He was Book of the Month. He was on the cover. And uh, it's a little scary because you see the gun there. But in essence, there's a much bigger story than this isn't just, you know, just only mafia killing. There's a lot. There's love. There's a lot of other things in this. So why don't you um, tell people what you did and and how it all went? And I think it's uh, important. A lot of authors are listening and they probably want some advice. Sure. Uh, Well, we um, I went to the Miami Shores Library um, and uh, I spoke with the uh, director and uh, they uh, offered me an invitation to come and discuss uh, and do a book reading in their uh, in their library, which is very quaint, very pretty. Uh, I was built in, I believe, in 1948, and it has this very nice big room. Um, so they prepared it for me. They had chairs, extra chairs, just in case. I frankly didn't realize or th- think at the time that uh, I would need them, uh, but we sent the flyer uh, with actually with your review. It was attached to the flyer, your review, plus uh, the day and the address and all so forth. So uh, I passed the flyers around and I called a few people and uh, invited others and... Um, to my surprise, uh, I had about 40 people. Uh, we had to use the extra chairs, and we had the uh, f- room full of people on Were Saturday morning at 10.30. Was this your first time you've ever done anything like this with this book? Well, uh, speaking regarding a book, yes, obviously uh, before I had been in front of a uh, group of people in my previous positions, uh, you know, you have to make a presentation to your board of directors or managers or, or so forth so but this is very personal yes it is it's much I mean, you different. put yourself right out there yes don't you? yes <laughs> uh, actually uh, now that you say that uh, i overheard um i think after i spoke uh and i will go and explain what what i what i did but after i finished speaking and uh, i was signing books and i overheard someone say you know, I started reading the book, but when you hear the, when you hear it, uh, it's so much compelling. It's so different, and I thought, well, that's good. Then, <laughs> so actually, it went very well. I started obviously um, uh, greeting everyone and thanking them for coming on a beautiful Saturday morning, sunny. I thought you people are crazy to be here uh, <laughs> instead of being out at, on the beach. But anyway, they were there. And uh, and the place actually doesn't have too many parking spots. So uh, the meeting didn't really start until uh, probably about 10.40, 10.45. But again, it, it people kept coming in and coming in. And well, well, I guess we need extra chairs. So we started putting extra chairs and the room was full. But and, again, and with the, excuse me, but thinking about the person who is in charge of that whole thing, they don't usually get crowds like that unless they have a famous author, I right. think. Mm-hmm. So you made that person very happy because they could write it up in their report. Yes. Well, Francis, uh, who was the manager, and then I met with Miss Brown, uh, who is the director, a lovely young lady also. Uh, and Francis was very, very helpful from the very beginning because we tried – to do the reading previously, and the book wasn't ready, unfortunately, so we had to postpone it. And we agreed on to do it on this uh, on this Saturday morning. So I started about two weeks before we started announcing it, and um, and so after I I greeted the 
people that were were there, I started reading the first chapter. I stopped, and then I allowed them to ask me questions. Some of them were very interesting. Um, after a few question and answer session, I read another short chapter, and again we had uh, some very good questions. Uh, one person asked me, uh, how did I develop the characters? Did I put my heart and I, I imbued myself into the character itself? And I, I obviously said that I had to in order to make the person alive. But you never had any missing people in your life, did you? Well, obviously, yes, I have missed, uh, well, you, you know, people die. No, I didn't mean that, but property. a child kidnapped or a wife, no, nothing no, like that. No, no, nothing like that. That was all up in your, you know, your right. imagination. And, uh, I'm sure that a lot of my imagination comes from previous readings. They say that uh, no book is really new. It's just that you tell the tale in a different uh, manner. So, you know, everything has been written already. So it's just what kind of flavor you add to it, what kind of pizzazz you, you right, put into it. Right, the characters, really. Right. That, I yes. think they make the, the book uh, really sing. But right. but let me just ask you to, maybe because we don't want to run out of time, uh, did you get your YouTube? Uh, have you gotten yes, YouTube and have you yes, put that I on did. your website? And, yes, and several people um, made a comment about it. Uh, I put it in social media. And I got replies, absolutely, course, yes. Some people were very uh, excited about it. And, uh, so why don't we give a little bit of a, what I would call a, an elevator speech, or a little bit longer than an elevator speech, maybe from the 100th <laughs> floor down, uh, about your book. So if people mm. aren't familiar with just, mm. you know, the, the Justified Retribution is the name, and Jorge Reyes, R, R, uh, Jorge G. Reyes S, R-E-Y-E-S, and there's another S, if um, you just tell people a little bit about this, then maybe, and then we'll give them a way for them to order the book. Of course, this is story that starts in principle starts in two thousand and eight, um, and it begins basically in the mountains of Colombia. It's a, a homestead that this person has. It's a, he's a American born of Colombian and American parents. One of them. Um, they have been living in this land for many, many years. The original ancestry comes from the Panama Canal uh, construction. Uh, so his great grandparents were there, and they decided to live there. And so that's how he ends up being there. And he has a huge, huge uh, ranch, a farm. And um, he ends up meeting his lovely wife on a trip to Mexico. And um, this I took out of personal experience, actually. At one time, many years ago, there was a uh, Fourth of July party, a reception at the American U.S. ambassador's residence in Mexico City. And they had a UNICEF uh, charity event, an afternoon full of painters and other artists. So I went there. So I figured, why don't I use that as the location where these two people meet, him and his wife. And so I used that. And um, and so they, they're they basically happy, and he has to uh, make a trip to New York in the meantime, and um, she disappears during that trip. And um, they can't find her. He thinks she's been kidnapped, but there's no ransom being called for her. Uh, can't find her. And it just happens that there is a Colombian drug dealer who also is also very rich, who covets his land, this man's land. His name is Alexander, Alejandro, Alex. Those are the different names that I use in the book. And um, he wants this man's land. But this uh, Colombian drug dealer happens to have two partners. And one is a Mexican cartel dealer who actually takes care of the distribution in the United States, basically. And then there is a money launderer who lives in Miami, and he's um, basically probably Cuban-American. Uh, nothing against Cubans. I am Cuban, so don't get me wrong. <laughs> and um, they're all in 
collusion to try to destroy and basically annihilate this man. And they almost succeed. And so the story goes uh, about, about the travails of this man who his beautiful 100-year-old mansion uh, is attacked and he's left for dead. His son, in the meantime, escapes with his nanny into the jungle. And um, eventually we find out that his wife has been kidnapped and is actually uh, being held by the Colombian uh, drug dealer. So, and she has lost her memory. And so the story goes on. But she lost her memory because she was... She was right. Uh, he, she yes. was. Yes. Um, so there was a little right. bit of brutality there. Right. 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 She she was uh, uh, beaten up and mugged. Basically, uh, she didn't expect it, and she falls down and hits the back of her head. And when she wakes up, she doesn't know who she is, where she is, and of course, she gets worse for her because she's kept uh, hidden in water no food for for hours until um, she's taken to this man's house and then he calls the doctor and have her fixed fixed up uh, temporarily so it's it's, it's uh, a lot of intrigue there but yes, here but mm-hmm. it takes us through this poor man the poor husband mm-hmm, mm-hmm. now he doesn't know where his mm-hmm. child is doesn't right. know what's happened to his wife Yes. And, and you know, and as powerful as you are, mm-hmm. I mean, he was really in terrible right. straits. Right, and he gets all his ranch and farm friends uh, to help him uh, scour the land to go all over the place because he has, again, as I mentioned before, he has a huge, huge place, and they just can't seem to find it. And all they've managed to uh, find is her hat near uh, the riverbank. And one of the people that uh, found the hat says uh, she may have been eaten by crocodiles or, no, or alligators. Well, that so makes sense because she may know, have fallen into the water. Else, and, uh, but she, how can that happen? She's a good swimmer. Right? I don't believe that. And he has a hard time believing it. Um, he can't really accept it. Uh, during this period who, before the attack on his ranch, um, his young son, who's six, barely six years old, tell him that he tells him his, he tells his father that his mom isn't dead, that she's alive, but she's lost. Uh, so the child seems to have kind of a sixth sense. Um, you know, he feels some things, of course, he can't figure out what it is, but he has this child innocence, and yet he seems to feel what's, on occasions, what may be going to happen. If you've just tuned in, you're listening to the author of Justified Retribution. His name is Jorge G. Reyes S., and he wrote this, let's see, it's, it's, a, it's a big book, but once you get into it, you don't even look at the amount of pages. It's about... Oh, 470 pages or so. And, of course, Jorge is, he's a local author, which is great. He lives in Miami. Yes. And he's telling us a little bit about his book. Now, uh, he, when we started out, he got a wonderful surprise. And I've always told people when they become a book of the month or whatever they do in Boomer Times, it brings their book out into a big energy. We don't, you know, you never know. You could exactly. put an ad in a, mm-hmm. the Miami Herald and you might not get anybody. But right. the point is, is that our readership, all of you listening, I know you love books. You have all these book clubs. And this is a book I suggest you get. And if you're lucky, you might even get Jorge to come and speak to you. So that's what I'm <laughs> going to push right now. He would be glad no matter where it is, Palm Beach County, Miami, it doesn't matter, Broward County. So if you want to get a hold of him, this is how you would do it. It's J O R G E G Reyes, R E Y E S. So it's J O R G E G, excuse me, R E Y E S dot author at gmail dot com. Now we probably do you have a website? Uh, yes, I do. So yes. let me let me see if I have the website. I'll give you that. The website. Well, you can go to Amazon dot com, but they want to get you directly. Can I use your phone? Yes, you may. Sure. Okay, this is a phone number. Now, this is, it would be great for you to call him. Uh, he isn't going to publish your book. This is strictly, if you're interested in his book, 
It's 305-297-6003. Correct. And that's his own personal number. So if you would like to have, and a lot of you have clubs, you would like to have a very attractive author who loves his book. And by the way, he has another book and it's already written. It's, uh, it follows the same characters. Yes, it and does. And it's called Road to Redemption. The covers are absolutely gorgeous. This Road to Redemption, we haven't talked about that. Maybe we'll do another time because I want to. Uh, and I think you have a third that you said you in process, working work in process. Do which you is, ever sleep? Which is the end of the series in principle. <laughs> that's the the third book would would finalize this uh, this uh, this whole idea of what right, you decided. Right. right. Is, is there um, morality in this? There must be. Well, the, I I think the morality they're they're very uh, good. Always triumphs over evil. Eventually, um, uh, I don't think we. will we want to quote the Bible that eye for an eye, uh, not necessarily that way, but in a, in a way it, it does happen to be uh, why those titles are there because uh, in the first book he has reason to, to be... Um, upset? Upset, <laughs> I, angry. <laughs> Uh, and he actually has to perpetrate some some really uh, awful things in order to survive and in order to rescue his people. So he 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 wonders. He says, "You know, am I going to be forgiven? I'm I'm I have killed people, something I hadn't done before." So you know, it's it's very. Uh, you know, he, he, he feels it. He sure he, he, he is very upset to the fact that he didn't want this to be put on him and yet he has to do it because it's the only way he can survive. And we're not going to tell you what happens to his child, his son mm-hmm. and not Jorge's son, but the son of the character, the the um, hero, I call him. Right. Or his wife. Right. The little boy's name is Gabrielle and the wife of Alec. Alejandro, her name is uh, Virginia. Uh, so those are, you know, some of the main characters, uh, protagonists. In yes, the book. yes. And of course, we know what happened in Colombia and some of, I think they cleaned right. up their act in Colombia. Well, that's true. And, and that's why I actually wanted to use Colombia. Now, during that time, there were, uh, that was really the beginning of the end of the FARC, which is was the revolutionary guerrilla movement, uh, although towards later years they became more of uh, also involved in drug trafficking. So um, it was still very much alive during those years. So I thought I can use that as my backdrop. But he, the story really is about people. It's how people react to um, ter- terrible tragedy. How they survive, people that don't know them that want to help uh, because they have good feelings, you know, good sentiments, um, and cruelty. A lot and, of and, very of bad course, guys, right? And it, right, definitely very bad guys. Uh, but you know, it's all intertwined, and and you know, something happens or someone says something, and then. There is a chain of, of events that, that assist and help to for things to develop further. And how many times did you rewrite the book before you said, oh, okay, well, we're going to do it? Um, many, many tries. Uh, y- y- when you write, I mean, I- I'm sure that every author, every writer has different styles. I tend to just write. And then I have, finally, I think I have the end of the book. And then I do... The second draft, uh, and I go, uh, I change the phone, uh, the font in my uh, hmm. in my computer, so I can reread because there's so many errors that you make, and you need a proofreader, and then you need an editor, and uh, sometimes you don't get that lucky, you don't get people good enough, uh, so that it, it did happen with me uh, with the first book. I had better support in the second book. And uh, as a matter of fact, I think the – and that's one of the things I have to do now is have the, um, the e-book version uh, redone uh, from this book 
because uh, it's got the old version and uh, and I know it has um, mistakes in it. It's interesting. I don't know about you, mm. but I'm not into ebooks. I love to hold a book right, and read. Isn't right. that funny? Yes. Well, lots of people have gone back and forth. I, I, I know that lots of people at first loved e-books, and then after a while uh, they decided that they wanted to go back, as you said, to hold a book in their hands rather than, than read it. Uh, right. I can't yes. put a little right. a tag on my page. Exactly. In exactly. But, but somehow this technology of holding this, you know, my, my, I, my iPad or something, you know, to read it, I don't know. I know if you're on a plane or some people read a lot of books so they can put them all into their, sure, you know, sure. in, in there. But um, even magazines, uh, people say, oh, well, the magazines, magazines are dead. No, they're not. I, I see it online, but it's not the same. It's I not the touch same. It. I, I had the same problem with my newspaper. I uh, I was reading it uh, in the computer in my, in my iPad, and then I I couldn't share with my wife. So uh, we, we went back to the written version, and I still love the feeling of paper. And sometimes it's actually better when you read it in your iPad, especially some, some areas. But overall, I, I enjoy it much better reading and feeling the paper in my hands. Right. And, of course, if I have a section I finish and she wants to look at it, she can. <laughs> yeah, I, of course. That's, that's always the way it was with, with us also. But So now your second book is out there, and you are going to be promoting that. But I guess you have to almost promote the two of them together in a way. In a way, yes. And then mm-hmm. when your third one comes out, now when do you think that that will come out? Well, um, What's your I hope? have over 100 and some pages written, and it's March, so with luck, I think that probably by November... A holiday book. Yes, because I will go through easily five or six readings. After I complete it, I have to go through the draft and go back and go back and go back. And and it's amazing how many little errors you find. And and even word will change words for you sometimes. And all of a sudden you find a word that says, well, that's not what I wrote. That's, that doesn't have anything to do with what I said. <laughs> of course. And you have to change the word again. So have you ever read your book out loud? As a matter of fact, when I did the uh, the reading uh, last Saturday, uh, I did that. Yeah, I heard you said that, but I mean, in the process of oh, when you I'm right, it. yes, uh, I especially in the dialogue areas, I try to portray the character and hear hear how this person speaks and how the other person responds, because that will fine tune your ear. Does it this sound? true does this person sound real uh you don't want a character uh that that sounds uh, made of cardboard you want to to be a real person so yes you have to do that and i know my my husband's written books and i uh, the last one that's coming out is sci-fi and uh before he passed away as a matter of fact it was very good that we took time and we took about four months and we read the book out loud, I read yes. it, and then he'd say, no, add this word. Or, no, let's put that instead, because it's what you said when you hear it. It mm-hmm. wasn't really right the way it was written. He exactly. said, I'd prefer to do this, and so now I have to take yes. all his corrections and now mm-hmm. put it into the computer and then send it to a publisher. Wow. So wow. I, I know that it is a, you know, what you was can't. The, what is the name of it? It's called, it's called Saving the Moon. Saving the Moon, and that is coming out? It will. When I get finished right. making all the corrections, right. it's about. Right. 400, 500, 400 to 500 pages, and it's, it's nice, very nice exciting. Mm-hmm. Well, it's probably I'm the best be thing he has ever it. written. Right. So it's a good memory for me to have, yes. and it helps pass. How long my... ago? Oh, he wrote. Oh, he wrote that in 2013, and it sat, mm-hmm. and because he was doing a lot of other things, but it was only four months before he passed away oh, that we took the time, mm-hmm. and I said, "You ought to come out and get that out. It's so good, and I'm so glad because it's his book. It isn't mine. It's." But I'm going to make sure it gets out there. It's a memory. It's a very, very uh, exciting book. He dealt with an astronaut, a Mm -hmm. friend of ours, who was on the moon. So a lot of the things, because people have to go to the moon to see what's going on in the moon. Of course. It's a a very, very exciting lot of sex in it. You have to let me know when it comes (laughs) out, please. Yes, I will. I will. will, will, will I love reading. Uh, I mean, half my time, I'm, I'm all reading someone else. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm finishing Den of Thieves, 
And then I'm going to be reading a man called Ovi, which I, I, I understand is also very, very good. And I had been reading, which is very dense, uh, Jesus, um, the King of the Jews, it has to do with why was he crucified? And it's a very interesting huh. uh, book in the sense that it, 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 it goes into all the um, traditions and the things that, uh, you know, the Jewish uh, people would do and... and the, the cleaning process, the purifying process, and the temple, and, and what the apostles wrote, and why did they write? I mean, it's it, very dense. It, it's not a, a book for uh, for light reading, uh, but I find it very interesting. Well, well, you so you see, I think the, what makes you a good author too is you read a lot, and you can read what other people say, yes. and you pick up things from there. Right. So it's very good. Well, I can't tell you or how, how wonderful it was to have you here again. And we're going to look forward to people maybe having you read for them and get selling delighted. your book. And maybe we'll be able to help you with your next book. So, Absolutely. So we thank you again for being here. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure.